OK, uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, welcome to this UK FPO uh, webinar um, on using the ePortfolio. Um, I'm Tony Chules. I am uh, the uh, advisor to the UK FPO, um, and I was extensively involved in the development of the current curriculum. Um, I have with me two co-presenters this afternoon who I'll ask to introduce themselves. Um, first one is Fiona Cameron. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Fiona Cameron. I am the Foundation School Director in Scotland, and I also had um, a significant input into this current curriculum and assessment strategy. And I'm going to introduce Doana, um, who is one of our UK FPO, FPO fellows. Hi, my name is Doana. I'm currently an F2 um, at the hospital in Durham. If anyone's familiar, I'm currently um, one of the UK FPO fellows. OK. Um, so as you're probably aware, um, we do have a series of webinars about um, about recruitment, um, uh, about uh, the curriculum itself. Um, we have training sessions for um, supervisors um, and we're also hoping to um, uh, run some more interesting or run some interesting webinars this year um, about specific hot topics. Um, so um, this afternoon's one is really a little bit about getting to know the portfolio and how to use it um, and um, putting some evidence within it. Um, and we're going to particularly talk about um, SLEs in this one. So next slide, please, Tamika. Uh, the um, Foundation program is a medical training program, postgraduate medical training program, uh, like um, many others. Um, it has uh, a curriculum and it has standards that um, foundation doctors are supposed to achieve um, to pass the year. So there's an assessment to some degree at the end of F1, another one at the end of F2. Um, progress uh, is largely mapped out against the curriculum. Um, and the outcomes are broken down uh, into the higher level outcomes. Uh, so um, they're shown on the screen at the moment. Um, and each of those higher level outcomes is broken down into what we call the foundation professional capabilities. Um, and these are things that we expect foundation doctors to demonstrate or capabilities we expect found out foundation doctors to demonstrate um, as they move through the year um, in different settings. Um, and having evidence that, that foundation doctors have completed these um, is one of the major uh, things used to assess at the end of the year uh, to make sure that foundation doctors have achieved the standard so that F1s can um, get full registration um, and F2s um, are considered eligible to move into specialty training uh, when they choose to. So next slide, please. Uh, as you're probably aware, the foundation programme is an experiential learning programme. Um, it's done on the job um, and the jobs that foundation doctors work through should um, provide them the ability or the capability to be exposed to a variety of different um, environments to demonstrate the different capabilities. So next slide, please. Uh, the capabilities are supposed to be very generic um, and uh, we expect evidence in the portfolio uh, that foundation doctors uh, have dealt with uh, physical health conditions, mental health conditions and are aware of social health issues and the impact of um, social conditions on health. Uh, and we expect foundation doctors to gain experience in a variety of settings too, um, both not, not only in acute care, uh, but also in the management of chronic illness um, and, and in community care. So next slide, please. Uh, as I say, all this um, evidence is mapped into the portfolio. There are a variety of different um, ways that the evidence can be gathered uh, from feedback, from uh, actually doing things on the job, um, from feedback, multi-source feedback, uh, reflection and so on. Um, we're going to concentrate particularly this afternoon on the SLEs, the supervised learning events, um, and Fiona is going to go into this in a little bit more detail shortly um, and then we'll talk a little bit about um, the use of the portfolio to provide evidence. Um, as I say, 
it is a pro it's a training program. There's an assessment at the end of the year, or in fact, should I perhaps put it the other way, that the portfolio is assessed at the end of the year at the ARCP, and all trainees have to go through this process at the end of every calendar year, um, regardless of whether you're full time or um, less than full time. There will be an ARCP at the end of every year um, to review training progress. Um, and the point of this is to allow progression onto the next level of training. And as you progress on, it also um, provides evidence to the GMC uh, as part of the revalidation cycle, which uh, all doctors have to go through. So if we could have my final slide, please. Oh, sorry, no, uh, this is uh, the ARCP checklist. Um, I do apologize, not quite the final slide. Um, if you look in the curriculum, you will find that the uh, ARCP checklist, it's quite short. We can have the next slide up as well, please. It's on page 49 of the curriculum. Um, right. These are the things that uh, all foundation doctors are required um, to produce at their ARCP. Um, so now I think it is my final slide. Uh, and this is just a screenshot of um, my own um, portfolio, for want of a better term. Uh, consultants have to undergo an annual appraisal. Uh, we had to gather evidence in exactly the same way as uh, doctors in training have to. Um, and you'll see if you look down the, the left hand side uh, that I have to develop a PDP, um, that I have to talk about the challenges and achievements through the year. Uh, I have to make a health declaration. Um, I have to talk about the CPD I've undertaken. Um, and um, I have to uh, make a declaration and discuss any incidents, um, complaints uh, that I've been involved in. Um, and when I submit this, um, I have to write a commentary or for want of a better term, a summary narrative um, of what I've been up to through the year um, that shows that I'm, um, I'm uh, competent and capable to still practice. Um, so that's the background, really. Um, that's just talking a little bit about the training program and talking about um, the fact that we use the portfolio to provide evidence for the training program. And I should probably say at this stage that as well as providing evidence for the training program, uh, the portfolio is designed as a record of other things that have been done. It's very useful um, in terms of specialty applications or applications to um, other, other jobs that foundation doctors uh, may go on to apply for. So I'm going to hand over to Fiona now, who's going to talk in a little bit more detail um, about these SLEs um, and the use of them in gathering evidence. Thank you very much, um, Tony. Um, now, I'm going to talk to you in a bit more detail about, about what an SLE is. Many of you will have be, be familiar with these because you have um, done them at medical school. For some, it will be entirely new. Um, and, and what I want to talk about is the actual detail of what you should do. Um, next slide, please, Tamika. OK, so what, what is it? It's called a supervised learning event. So throughout your, your, your year, your training years, you will be performing um, clinical encounters. So when you have a, super, a, a learning event that you want to record, um, as an incident that you have done, then you will ask for a supervised learning event. So it's an observed clinical account encounter where you receive constructive feedback from a more senior clinician. And we categorise our SLEs into three different types. So these are done on the job if during the day, in the evening sometimes, or on night shift, depending when you're there. If you're working with somebody more senior and you say, I'm going to do something with a patient, I'm going to assess them, I'm going to clock them in, I'm going to do a procedure. I would like you to observe me doing this and I'd like you to give me feedback on how I'm doing. And we, so we break them down into three types and these are used undergraduate um, in the UK. They are used in postgraduate specialties. So when you move into your specialty training, you will be using these as well. So we've got something called a case based discussion. We have something called a mini, mini clinical evaluation exercise, which is called a mini KEX. And we've got the direct observed procedure and that's just abbreviated to DOPS. So we talk about a CBD, a mini KEX or a DOPS. Once you have had this observed clinical encounter, 
it gets recorded on your ePortfolio. And then once you've got that, then you can link it to the relevant FPCs. And Joanna's going to go and um, later and talk to us a little bit more about what you select, how you do it, um, and, and what you'll be looking for when you're doing that. I just want to talk about really the actual SLEs just now. So I'm going to deal with each of them in turn. Um, can we have the next slide, please, Tamika? OK, so this is something that the educationalists like. OK, so the reason that we choose these SLEs is if you think about everything that we do in medicine um, as being a pyramid and at the bottom of the pyramid, we have got what we know. So we got our textbooks out and we look online and we learn all the facts. Uh, up and beyond that, we expect to know how to do it. So we might have to do some reflection or some simulation. Then it shows how we actually, that's our simulation bit. But if you look at the top of it, the does bit, the does bit is your SLEs, it's experiential learning. That encompasses everything within clinical practice. So it's, do you have the knowledge to underpin what you're doing? Do you have the clinical skills to, to, to demonstrate? So it's like your clerking, your cardiovascular exams, everything that you do. Do you have communication, safety and infection control and team working? So it encapsulates everything that we do as a doctor and that's why we value them so highly and that's why we ask for feedback on the things that you're doing well and areas where you want to improve or you might want to improve and that will give you the evidence for your curriculum to, for the links to, satis to, get, to satisfy the ARCP panel. So next slide please Tamika. OK, so the first one, we have a case based discussion. Now, when you're working um, on in the wards or in your GP's practices, you say, I'd like to do a CBD, I'd like to do a case based discussion. So you would select a case or maybe it's one day in the ward, you think this is a really interesting case. I've been involved in this. I know it will map to the curriculum because I know what the curriculum shows. I'd like to do this as an SLE. So you then say to a senior, I'd like to discuss this case with you. Your range of time, you can just have that discussion with the senior. Um, and, you know, so you might want to present, you present the case, you might want to present the findings, and then you'd have a discussion about, about what the options were, what the, what the you know, the, the, the action plan was and the treatment plan for that patient. Then you go to your portfolio, you complete a CBD form, you send that ticket to the senior, they fill in the feedback, it comes back to you and then you upload it. At this stage, you may want to put a reflection in as well about the case. So that is a case-based discussion. Can I have the next slide, please? The next one is a mini KEX, so it's a mini clinical evaluation exercise. Now, this is similar but slightly different. So you might have seen a patient on a ward round, you might have seen a patient that you, you, you assessed with a senior and you have done the assessment, you have maybe taken the history, done the examination, but maybe focused, whatever. And then you say, actually, I'd like to do this as a mini KEX, please, to the person that was with you. You do your clinical encounter, whatever it is, you take a history, you do an assessment, communication with family, whatever it is, discuss your findings with and your experience with the senior, complete the mini KEX form and send the ticket to the senior for completion. And again, you may want to reflect. Can I have the next slide, please? The next one is adopt directly observed procedure. Now, this is much more suitable to procedures. So you complete the same process. You say, can I do this with your senior? Um, and you might want to select a procedure, something like a, an acidic tap or performing and interpreting arterial blood gases. And again, complete the DOPS form and send the ticket. The DOPS are not there for demonstrating the core procedures um, because they're not mandatory in your portfolio, but you may, you may want to, to complete a DOPS form for some of these. Can I have the next slide, please? Um, and in reality, what might happen, ideally you want to be seen um, and observed by your performance, but sometimes it can be quite difficult to get people to observe, observe your performance. And, and Joanna might go into a little bit more detail about that. But essentially, you have to put in what you've done and send it for feedback from your senior. There are some other forms within the portfolio, and that's the learn form, the leader form and the DCT. So the learn form is a learning evaluation and reflection note that can be used in place of any of the SLE forms. So you can use that for a mini KX adopts or a CBD, um, and it's got specific space in there for you to add reflections on your performance. So you can use that interchangeably with any of the other forms. 
the leader form is your leadership form and that can be used to record any leadership activities. But again, you could put that onto a mini kex or a CBD form if you wanted to, but the form lends itself very nicely to using um, to, to this um, leadership activities. And then there's a DCT, developing the clinical teacher, and that can be used to evidence any teaching activity. So these forms are there for you as well. And I thought I'd just mention them because when you go down into your portfolio, you may see these forms and ask what they're for. Can I have another the next slide, please, Tamika? OK, so a little quick one or two questions about SLEs now. There are no specific numbers or case or mix are required for your SLEs. However, I would suggest you want a range. You don't want all CBDs. You don't want all mini cases or all DOBs. Your, 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 your supervisors are going to ask you for a range um, of SLEs. Um, and you'll be expected to demonstrate a good number of these and you'll probably need somewhere in the region between 12 and 18, although um, it's very much up to you what you put into your portfolio, but it's unlikely that you'll be able to ever use your portfolio with, with, with fewer than that number of SLEs. It's important to remember that SLEs are not pass fail. If there are areas in your um, in your performance that need improvement or show areas for development, then you should receive this feedback constructively and, and help you to progress. One thing that I would say is that FPC2, which is acutely deteriorating patient, that should be evidenced with a simulation and not just um, an SLE, but you may want to put SLEs in for that as well. But really, really important, SLEs do not need to be perfect. They are meant to show that you're what you're good at, and identify areas where you need to progress. And that's really important. And if somebody gives you feedback to say this needs to be improved, that's for you to learn. It is not pass fail. So don't worry about that. Can I have the next slide, please? OK, so that's really a little sort of snapshot of, of, of what an SLE, a supervised learning event um, is. And I'm now going to hand over to Doana, who is going to give you a little bit more information or a lot more information on actually how, how, how you do this. Thank you very much. Do we have um, Duana's slides? Duana, do you want to see if you can then maybe just show your slides? Yeah, I can try to. Might be easier if, because I think um, Tamika's is frozen. Sure. Perfect, thank you. Okay. Is everyone able to see my slides? It's just disappeared, actually. Oh, there we are. That's it back. Good. Oh, it's I'm just putting it in presenter mode. So, OK, are you able to see the screen? Yes. It's OK, good. perfect. So again, my name is Duana. I'm currently an F2 um, and I wanted to kind of share my experience a little bit about portfolios and talk a little bit about how to actually master your portfolio, give you some simplified strategies for success. So before I give you my specific kind of top tips for managing your portfolio, I want to talk a little bit about understanding your portfolio, because I think if you don't understand your portfolio and why it's important for you, you may you know, kind of view it um, in a different lens and not be able to um, you kind of fulfill all the needs that you need from your portfolio. So I picked kind of like my five top um, reasons why I think the portfolio is actually important. Um, sorry, I think there's messages popping up. I'm not able to read them. So if anybody wants me to stop, you can let me know. All right, so my first um, kind of important point here is professional development. So it's a structured way to actually reflect on your clinical practice, identify areas for improvement and set your goals. It's a great way to actually show your competence. So a well-maintained portfolio serves as tangible evidence of your competence, achievements, and your capabilities. It demonstrates commitment. So it's an independent project that shows learning and professional growth throughout the year. It documents your experiences and it demonstrates your professional journey, your accomplishments. 
And lastly, one of my personal favorites is that it's a personal motivation. So it allows you to actually track your progress, celebrate your achievements, and gain a sense of accomplishment in your career. So one of the things that I wish somebody really emphasized for me before I started filling out my portfolio in F1 was how to actually be intentional about my portfolio and what it means to be intentional and why it's important and how it can actually help me down the line. Um, so again, I picked my kind of like top tips for being intentional with your portfolio. So the first thing is that an intentional portfolio showcases skills, experiences, and accomplishments that are directly relevant to your career objectives. So everybody's portfolio is going to be different. Everybody has their own career goals, their own accomplishments that they're trying to show, and things that they're trying to work on. So I think if you're intentional with your portfolio, you're able to build it so it's more personalized to you and can help you down the line and with your future. Secondly, it highlights you as an individual doctor as well as your role as a member of the healthcare ecosystem. So, um, you know, as much as it is a personal project and it's all about you and, you know, your progression and your growth, we do work in an ecosystem. We are part of a team. So it's important for us to kind of display that in our portfolio as well. So you have to be mindful of your contribution to the ecosystem, but also your team as well. So that's why we ask people to give feedback and that's why we send the MSFs to hear what other people in the team are saying about us so we can learn and grow. Thirdly, it ensures that your portfolio effectively communicates your strengths and your achievements. So um, personally, I know when you come into F1, you might be, you know, a little um, shy and kind of, um, you know, unsure about how you are as a doctor. But I think the portfolio is a really great way to show that you do have strengths and, you know, show your achievements throughout and it gives you a little bit of a morale boost. Um, it helps you avoid including unnecessary or redundant information. So this saves times for both you and anyone reviewing your portfolio, ensuring they focus on the most important details. So when you're very intentional with the things that you're putting in your portfolio, when you pay attention to what you're putting in your portfolio, it makes it more diverse. So you're not repeating things. Um, so then, you know, closer to the end of the year, you're not rushing to try to find different ways to show, you know, the ARCP panel that you are a great doctor or that you are able to display certain skills. You know, pay attention to what you're putting onto your portfolio and it makes sure that it's a lot more clean. Um, relevant and pinpoints you know the most important details so when the panel is actually looking at your portfolio they're able to see this is the type of doctor that this person is and you know they've had a really successful and great year and then lastly knowing that your portfolio is thoughtfully curated and aligned with your goals can boost your confidence it provides a tangible representation of your capabilities and contributions again you know being an f1 is not easy um, it's very hard to really believe in yourself when you first start f1 because you feel like you're in a completely different environment new territory so i think your portfolio kind of serves as a little bit of a friend that you could go back to and kind of read and see your progress and see that you know you're not doing you know a horrible job in your first year you're actually doing a lot better than you think Moving on to the next slide. So now I wanna kind of go into my um, personal kind of tips on how to simplify your portfolio. So my one of my biggest tips is to actually study the curriculum. Um, one thing that I found very helpful for myself is actually printing it out. So I kind of copied and pasted um, the things in the curriculum that I needed to know, made a little Word document, printed it out. Um, I actually highlighted keywords and things so I can kind of understand what's supposed to be under each L um, HLO. And something that I've heard um, people do is that if you're not really sure about the keywords or you don't know how to display those things, you can look for synonyms online. You can try to look for ideas on Google of how you can maybe display these certain characteristics in a doctor um, and kind of jot down some notes so you really understand what you're supposed to be putting on your portfolio. Another example of this is learning keywords and learning how to write your um, SLEs and your DOPS and everything. So, for example, prescribing versus safe prescribing. So um, I was actually having um, a conversation with one of our consultants the other day about portfolios and ARCP, and she was saying that, um, you know, she really wishes that people would study the curriculum more because somebody will put forward a SLE talking about prescribing, for example, because that's part of the portfolio, you know, at some point. And they will talk about the case and what they did and they'll say, oh, I prescribed antibiotics. And then they would kind of tag that into showing prescribing. But the key word here is safe prescribing. So, you know, if that person put into the SLE that they you know, we're supposed to prescribe antibiotics and what they did to demonstrate safe prescribing is that they actually, you know, went to the 
uh, BNF or they discussed with a senior and they calculated their weight and they prescribed it according to, you know, their size and, you know, according to the other medications and things, right? So you have to be very careful with, you know, the words in the curriculum. And again, the way to help you with that is to actually study the curriculum and understand it before you start submitting too many things. And then it's kind of too late and it's annoying for you to kind of go back and move things around and, and remap things. And it just helps you kind of simplify things for yourself. So learn the curriculum, read about it, study it, um, and use that every time you're uploading something. Studying the curriculum is very helpful for when you're brainstorming ideas. So we are new to the F1 role, but you know, you're not new to medicine and you're not new to ward rounds and things. So you kind of know what you're getting into with each of your rotations. So brainstorm ideas when you're looking at the at the curriculum. Think, OK, this is asking me to show initiative. How can I show initiative in my cardiology rotation? Right. So think about it, plan it and you know, focus on it again. Studying the curriculum is going to help you do all those things. And then lastly, for studying the curriculum, ask questions. If you don't understand what's on the curriculum, you don't know how you can you know, map things correct you, correctly, you don't know what this means, ask somebody. So what I actually did that I found very helpful is um, I spoke to one of the people that were on our you know, educational team that was very knowledgeable about portfolios. And I asked her for a quick 30 minute meeting just so we can kind of go through portfolios together because I'm the type of person that if I don't understand something, I don't feel comfortable with it, I won't perform as good as I you know, hope to. So I would rather you know, understand it in the beginning so I'm able to you know, kind of go through the year without having the stress of thinking that I don't actually know what's going on with, with my portfolio. So again, something that's going to help you simplify your portfolio is if you study your curriculum. Um, another tip is if you don't want to print out the, um, the curriculum, what you can do is open up two tabs on your computer, have the curriculum in one and then have your SLE or whatever you're doing in the other and make sure you're kind of flipping back and forth and reading through to kind of see how your SLE can kind of, um, you know, actually mirror what's supposed to be in your portfolio. All right, another way to simplify your portfolio is to plan your portfolio. So we all know our strengths and our weaknesses, and it's very important that you actually use them in your portfolio. So we know what we're, you know, maybe good at coming out of, you know, medical school and doing different rotations and things. So it is important to demonstrate your strengths, but you need to make sure that you're not you know, trying to make yourself look like a perfect doctor. And if you're very good at taking history, you don't want to have five, um, you know, CBDs or mini cases about you taking history um, with the same feedback that you did a great job and that you, you know, did a really great history and you asked really great questions. That's not going to really show your progress. Um, and another side of things is we know our weaknesses when we're coming through. Like, for example, a weakness of mine is ECGs. It's just always been difficult for me. So I've been making, you know, decisions um, for most of my rotations to try to work on my um, ECGs. And, you know, my next rotation is A&E. And one of the things that I know for a fact that I really want to work on in my next rotation is ECGs because everybody that comes in the A&E gets an ECG. So I want to be the person that's looking at them, trying to interpret them, discussing it with a senior and seeing if what I'm seeing matches what they're seeing. So again, Know your strengths, your weaknesses, use that in your portfolio. You're not supposed to show that you're perfect. You're supposed to show that you're improving. Another thing about planning for your portfolio is making your goals known. So if you know that you're having a pediatric rotation, think about what happens on a peds ward or in a peds a &E or whatever clinic or wherever you're going. And think about what you actually want to get out of the rotation and make that known to your seniors, to your regis, to your supervisor. Let them know these are my goals. This is what I want to see. This is what I want to do and they'll help you with that. They are very friendly. They, you know, understand that this is kind of, you know, a family um, on the ward when you're working with them. So if they have a specific case and they'll say, oh, I remember that Duana wanted to really work on this, they will kind of bring you along. Um, and another thing is ask about ex expectations. So even though you're, you, this is your first time, you know, in this ward or in this space, they have had tons of F1s on the ward. So they will maybe have their own expectations of what an F1 should be able to do. So you can approach your seniors, your regs and say, hey, as an F1, what would you want to see for me um, with these specific types of patients? They'll give you some really great tips. They'll guide you in the right direction. Um, and it'll be a lot easier for you to plan and again, simplify your portfolio. Another important thing about portfolio is making sure that you are organized. Um, the more organized you are, the more time it's going to save you um, once you get to the end of your portfolio and you're not going to be um, kind of um, all scrambled at the end trying to organize things right before your ARCP. 
So a really good tip that I have is actually using your PDPs um, to help you organize. So something that I recently started doing was, was dividing my PDPs into kind of three main categories that would fit kind of all of the SLEs, the DOPS, the mini -cexes. So I took a little screenshot of mine here for my pediatric rotation that I'm currently on. So I have my PDP for communication, PDP for practical skills, PDP for knowledge and for study. So um, the cool thing about PDPs is that you are able to kind of check that you've completed the PDP, um, you know, anytime throughout the rotation. So if I feel like I have, you know, really improved my communication up to the middle point of my um, rotation, I can kind of check that off in my PDP and I can use that to map it to different places in my portfolio. And I have all of my communication um, kind of you know, SLEs and DOPS and everything's under communication, it'll be really easy for me to map and things down the line. So instead of having one PDP where you're kind of clumping everything together, um, it might be easy for you to separate them into bigger goals and it will help you organize. Um, the next kind of tip I have here is using your SDT wisely. So everybody has SDT and I know that we have different you know ways and, and things that we can use it for but um, it's really important for you to kind of keep your portfolio updated and constantly be looking at your portfolios um, if your sdt is maybe a week away and you did a really good cbd right now and you don't have time you know today to actually upload it onto your portfolio you don't have time during the day or you know when you go home or whenever you feel like you would do it um, what i usually do is i'll quickly pick up my phone put in make a note saying you know this is the cbd these are my top points that i want to remember this is who I'm sending it to. Um, and, you know, this is a little bit of the reflection or things that I wanted to say. I'll save that on my phone. So then when the time comes for me to kind of sit down and organize my portfolio, I'm able to remember what I actually did throughout the day because I know we're very busy and it's quite hard to organize if you're not, um, you know, constantly on your portfolio every single day. And frankly, that might not be the case. So, you know, use your SDT wisely um, and kind of make notes for yourself. And if you aren't able to upload your entries that same day or that you know, same hour or whatever it may be, make sure you're planning for it and you know um, what you're uploading later on. Another point is knowing your entries and making note for improvement entries. So this is a really good one. Um, constantly be reading through the curriculum and your own portfolio because once mid-year mid hits, you're not really going to remember exactly what you did on your very first rotation or what your very first stop was. So constantly be flicking through your portfolio, see what you did um, and, you know, what's missing. So when you know your entries, you're going to be submitting your entries and you want to make note for your improvement entries. And what that means is, for example, if you are struggling with um, ABGs, you approach a senior saying, hey, the first ABG that happens today, can you do it? I want to see how, how you do it. And then the next one I'd like to do, and I want your feedback. You get to the point where you do the ABG, you're not able to get the blood, right? So you still put that on your portfolio, comment on, you know, maybe you seeing the senior actually doing it and successfully completing the ABG, write a little bit of a reflection and then make note that in you know a few weeks time, you wanna come back and add an improvement entry. Um, so that same senior is around say, hey, there's another ABG. I learned a few tips along the way. I practiced a bit. Can you come and supervise me? You get them to supervise you. They see you do the ABG, it's successful. You do another entry with that same person. Um, you write your reflection, they write their feedback, you link them both together, and that really shows that you've improved um, you know, in your portfolio. So again, know your entries and know how to kind of link any improvement entries that you possibly can. My last two points here, diversify your entries. So what do I have? What am I missing? Again, this is important for reading through your portfolio, understanding what you're doing. So you're not coming up to a week before your ARCP, realizing that you have four DOFs that are all the same things or three CBDs that all look alike. You know, make sure you're diversifying your entries and that kind of ties back into studying the curriculum so you'll know the different things that you can put into your uh, portfolio. And then another really, really big tip is mapping your entries early so i would actually recommend mapping your entry the second that you put on this entry into your portfolio because i had this issue i wasn't mapping early on because i didn't really understand it and then it came to a few weeks in and i had all of these entries and i needed to map and when i mapped them and i had them reviewed they my feedback was that i needed to remap things because some things weren't you know in the best place that they could be in the portfolio so i had to go back unmap everything map them again and it was a hot mess and it took me a very long time so map things early it will save you so much time and you would really appreciate it once you get to the end of your portfolio 
So that's kind of my top tips and, um, you know, how I think you should maybe approach your portfolio. But one kind of thing I want to leave you with is your portfolio is your elevator pitch. So I'm not sure if you're um, familiar with the idea of an elevator elevator pitch, but imagine you're in an elevator with your ARCP panel and you're going from floor one to floor 30, for example, and you have a few minutes to really demonstrate you know, how you are as a doctor. So you're showing them how you've improved, what you've done, what you can do, um, you know, your strengths, your weaknesses, you know, how competent you are, how hardworking you are. You have a few minutes to really, you know, put yourself out there as a doctor to your ARCP panel. So that's why I like to kind of look at a portfolio as an elevator pitch. Your portfolio is kind of an extension of you and it's representing you in your ARCP panel. So, you know, think about it, take the time to make it good. Um, at the end of the year, when you're looking at all of your achievements and your goals, it's really going to help you with your confidence and it's going to really help you with your F2 portfolio and everything going forward. So think about your portfolio as an elevator pitch um, and that it's an extension of you and it's representing you in the panel when you're not going to be there. Um, so that's it for my kind of tips and tricks on how to manage your portfolio. I hope that was useful and, um, you know, I think that if you kind of follow those guides, you guys will um, have really great portfolios hopefully by the end of the year. That's great. Thank you very much, Duana. Um, I haven't seen many many questions come in through the chat. Um, I will leave it open for a moment or two longer just to see if there's any questions now the presentations are over. Um, but I guess we should take this opportunity to thank you all for uh, attending this workshop. Um, thank uh, Tamika, uh, Kieran and um, Kato who've been working in the background. Um, and uh, we hope to see you all again uh, next month when we'll be talking a little bit more about PDPs, um, use of the summary narrative and other bits of the portfolio. Uh, so I can't see any more questions coming in. Um, so thank you all very much for attending. I think uh, we close the webinar now, Tamika, do you think? <laughs>